بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لاسٹ منتھ ان دی اینول کانگریس آف پاکستان سوسائٹی آف گیسٹرو انٹرالوجی ان جی آئی انڈاسکوپی آئی واز گیون اٹیک آن ابڈامنل ٹوبرکلوسس ان آن گوئنگ ساگا ان مینی آف مائی کلیگس ان پی جیز وشڈ دیٹ آئی شوڈ شیئر my lecture on my YouTube channel and I promised that I shall. So as promised, I'm uploading my lecture, re-recorded one for my YouTube and in the interest of time, I shall upload it in different sections The lecture included history of the abdominal tuberculosis, then its clinical features, its diagnosis, its management and the future prospects. So I shall upload this lecture in segments and today the historical background of abdominal tuberculosis, I shall share that. So the topic assigned to me was abdominal tuberculosis and ongoing saga. And I shall share uh, this lecture in its different segments. The first part of the talk is historical background of abdominal tuberculosis and then we shall discuss the pathophysiology and diagnosis then what are the types of abdominal tuberculosis then what are the treatment options for abdominal tuberculosis and at the end we shall discuss the future prospects of abdominal tuberculosis so few words about the historical background. Charles Dickens, the English writer, he described tuberculosis as a dread disease in which struggle between soul and body is gradual, quiet and solemn. That day by day, and grain by grain, the mortal part wastes and withers away. This was said around 100 years ago, rather more than that, and still this may be true till now. Hippocrates, in his horisms, what he wrote, Daria attacking a person affected with physis is a mortal symptom. And know this that physis was the name of tuberculosis at his time. So what he says, what he notices that diarrhea attacking a person affected with physis is a mortal symptom means a patient with tuberculosis, when that patient develops diarrhea, it's death. Joseph Walsh, in his transaction of the National Association of, for the Study and Prevention of Tuberculosis in 1909, but he said, it is impossible to diagnose abdominal tuberculosis with any degree of certainty since the disease mimics many other abdominal conditions and histological confirmation may be equivocal. So these sayings are true even today. About one quarter of the world's population has latent 
tuberculosis infection. This is the seventh most common cause of death, the leading death in the lower middle income countries. People infected with tuberculosis bacteria have a 5 to 15 percent lifetime risk of falling ill with tuberculosis. In 2016, 10.4 million people they developed tuberculosis and out of these 1.7 million died. In 2017, again 10 million people developed globally tuberculosis and 1.6 million died. I shall share the global tuberculosis report, the recent one 2022. And according to this, tuberculosis ranks among the top diseases which causes death worldwide. Then Pakistan is a country which has high prevalence of tuberculosis like estimated TB infections in 2021 for countries with at least 100,000 incident cases and Pakistan is here. Similarly, on another criteria of TB incidence rate, again, Pakistan ranks high. Similarly, MDR TB cases again, Pakistan rates high. And even the cross-sectional chance findings of patients with tuberculosis, Pakistan ranks high. So the wording saga, an ongoing saga, saga means a long story of achievement, rather series of achievements. And we know that abdominal tuberculosis is an ongoing saga. We have achieved a lot, but still we have to achieve more. So in this talk, we shall go back, we shall see back to the past, what happened in the past. Then we will assess the current situation of abdominal tuberculosis. And at the end, we will look in the future, what the future is going to bring to us regarding the abdominal tuberculosis. So, if you go to the timeline, the timeline of human history, the timeline is divided into two, the prehistory era and the history era when the history was written. The prehistory era is the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic, the Stone Age, when we don't see any write up. And then the history when some sort of record is available. The prehistory era is the Paleolithic, which is divided from 3 million to 10,000 years BC, and this is called the Old Stone Age. And then the Neolithic, the 10,000 to 3,000 years BC, which is called New Stone Age. Then the history, when it is available, some sorts of record, the ancient history era from 3,000 BC to 500 years BC. And this is the era of Egyptian civilization. Then the classical era from 500 BC to 500 AD, and this is the era of Greek and Roman civilization. Then the Middle Era, from 580 to 1580, 10 centuries, and this is the Dark Age. Then the Renaissance Era, 
from 1580 to 1703 centuries where there was rebirth of the cultural artistic political and economical values in the modern era from 1700 to 1800 two centuries era of the knowledge and experimentation in the current era from 1800 to present 2023 that is the era of discoveries and the future beyond 2023 when new horizons are going to happen so the abdominal tuberculosis saga dates back to the prehistory era and in each era new information and new discoveries and new knowledge has been added to the history of abdominal tuberculosis let's start from the prehistory era the paleolithic and neolithic era from 3 million to 3000 years bc tuberculosis tuberculosis has been known to my mankind since prehistory times it is believed that the genus mycobacterium was present in the environment about 150 million years ago an early variant of mycobacterium tuberculosis was originated in east africa about 3 million years ago and infected early hominids a growing pool of evidence suggests that the current strains of mycobacterium tuberculosis is originated from a common ancestor around 20,000 to 15,000 years ago then when we see the ancient era from 3,000 to 500 years bc when this is the egyptian civilization we do find an evidence of tuberculosis egyptian mummies dating back to 3400 years bc reveal skeletal deformities typical of tuberculosis such as this one in london's british museum is having characteristic signs of pots disease but strange enough in the old writer we don't see any mention of disease like tuberculosis it means disease was present it was affecting the people rather it was killing the people but they did not recognize this as being a disease the first mention about tuberculosis came from india in 3300 years ago in their write up and then from china in 2003 years ago they did mention about tuberculosis so in the ancient era we see that the mummies of the egyptian era did show the features of skeletal tuberculosis but they didn't mention about it but we see the evidence the mentioning of this disease is from india and from china coming to the classical era the era of 10th centuries from 500 bc to 500 ad and this is the greek and roman civilization here we can see the different approaches in the greece as well as in the rome tb was called physis our consumption in ancient greece while in the roman it was called tapes but we see most of the time or most of the information is from the greece Hippocrates described physis as a fatal disease especially for young adults 
in book of epidemics he described the symptoms of phthisis tuberculosis at that time which are very much similar to the common characteristics of tubercular lung lesions he and others believed that tuberculosis or phthisis at that time was hereditary in nature that it was the parents were giving this disease to their children it was asocrates who suggested that tb was an infectious disease it means it was not hereditary rather it was infectious disease and kids children were getting this disease from their parents as an infection or from their siblings as an infection this is when aristotle suggested that tb was contagious disease that one person infects the others a greek physician galen described the symptoms of tuberculosis as fever sweating coughing and blood stained sputum he also suggested that an effective treatment of tuberculosis should include fresh air milk and soy beverages in roman time that was on the greek part on the roman side tuberculosis was mentioned by celso eratus of cappadocia and celius rulinius however it remained unrecognized at that time so in the classical era this was mostly on the greek side when they mentioned about the tuberculosis is a phthisis and suggested that it's an infectious disease and explained noted down their its symptoms while on the roman side they did know that it's there but they didn't explain it any long this is in the middle era when we see good evidence in the middle ages during the middle ages no significant advances were made regarding tuberculosis ibn sina commonly known in the west as avicenna and abu bakr al razi commonly known in the west as razis both of them continued to believe that tuberculosis was contagious as well as difficult to treat as before but the new pattern found in this middle ages a new clinical form of tuberculosis was described as scrofula which is a disease of cervical lymph nodes people observed that there is lumps in the neck and they described this as scrofula in england and france during middle ages the disease was known as king's evil and there was a popular belief that the disease can be treated with the royal touch the practice of the royal touch established by english and french kings continued for several years queen anne was the last british monarch to employ this method of for healing this was gaiety colic who in 1363 as the first medical intervention for treating tuberculosis he proposed and he advised that removal of scrofulous gland is a treatment option so the royal touch which was considered to be the treatment for this king zevel it was him who said that no it should be treated with surgery and the gland should be removed then in 16th century 
a clear description about contagious nature of tuberculosis was first provided by the Italian physician Guralamo Frecasturo. So, in the Middle Ages, Scrofula was noted down. Initially, it was considered to be a king's evil and royal touch, but then the surgical option was suggested and later on the clear nature of its being contagious was explained. This is in the Renaissance era when we see some more progress and this era it comprises three centuries. In 1679 Dutch physician Franciscus Silvius he provided the exact pathological and anatomical description of tuberculosis in his book Opera Medica. In 1699, Italian health law was made and issued by the Republic of Luca to officially declare the nature of the tuberculosis as infectious one. So now it was taken as an infectious disease and admission of tuberculous patients in public hospital was forbidden and specific places for their treatment were established. So they were separated from the general patients. Then comes the modern era from 1700 to 1800 AD and this is the era of knowledge and experimentation. In 1720, English physician Benjamin Martin, he conjectured the infectious origin of TB in his publication, A New Theory of Consumption. In the 18th century in Western Europe, TB had become epidemic with a mortality rate as high as 900 deaths per 100,000 inhabitants per year, more revealed among young people. For this reason, TB was also called the robber of the youth. The extreme endemic failure of people affected by TB led to the new term white plague. In 1793, Scottish pathologist Matthew Bailey, he named the caseous necrosis as tuberculosis, as tubercles. In 1779, British surgeon Sir Percival Pott identified the vertebral collapse and spinal cord paralysis caused by TB infection as Pott's disease. So now the things are going towards the extra pulmonary disease and the power disease was found to be also a disease, a form of tuberculosis. Then what about the current era that is from 1800 to the present, 2023? The French physician Theophile Lenach invited the stethoscope. In 18 119, he identified the pathological signs of tuberculosis, including consolidation, pleurisy, and pulmonary cavitation. And this is him who identified that mycobacterial tuberculosis can infect the gastrointestinal tract, bones, joints, nervous system, lymph nodes genital and urinary system and skin, the extra pulmonary tuberculosis and the abdominal tuberculosis in addition to the respiratory tract that is the pulmonary tuberculosis. At the beginning of 19th century, there was a scientific debate about the exact etiology of tuberculosis. Many theories existed that that time Describing the disease as an infectious disease 
a hereditary disease or a type of cancer. They didn't know. In 1834, German physician John Lucas Schoenlein first coined the term tuberculosis. In German, this was written as tuberculosis. This was Hermann Bremer, a botany student in Silesia, when he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. He went to the Himalayas, continued his studies, and found himself cured. In 1854, he returned to Germany to study medicine, ultimately wrote a dissertation titled Tuberculosis is a Curable Disease. In 1859, he established a sanatorium among the fir trees of Silesia in Central Europe. And this was the first sanatorium, or rather the first intervention to treat tuberculosis. A German physician and microbiologist, Robert Koch, successfully identified, isolated, and cultured the tuberculous bacillus in the animal serum. Afterward, he produced animal models of tuberculosis by inoculating the bacillus. On March 20, 1882, his groundbreaking work was published in the Society of Physiology in the Berlin. It was in 1907 and 1908 when Perquet and Charles Mantouz developed the tuberculosis skin test wherein tuberculin extracts of the tuberculosis bacillus is injected under the skin and today's reaction and body's reaction was measured. So this was these two gentlemen who in 1907 and 08 discovered that test. We know in the recent years, advancement in tuberculosis diagnosis includes interferon gamma release assays, which are whole blood tests to detect microbacterial tuberculosis infection, the IGRA test. A pioneering work toward the prevention of tuberculosis was made by Albert Calmet, Jean Marais, Camille Guerin, who developed the BCG vaccine in 1921, 102 years ago. In 1943, a tuberculosis antibiotic streptomycin was developed by Selman Waxman, Elizabeth Hoogie, and Albert Schwartz. After word the Selman Westman received the Nobel Prize in 1952, and this was the new era of therapeutics of tuberculosis. We know in the recent era for antibiotics, as soon as it was discovered in 1951, parazinamide in 1952, in the next decade, the Tampotol in 1961, and Rafimpine in 1966, and these are used effectively the treatment of tuberculosis. So, my dear colleagues, I shall stop here. In the next episode, I shall be discussing the pathophysiology and diagnosis of tuberculosis and the other topics.